Most people think consciousness, whatever it is, is just supercalifragilistic expialidocious. It's something so wonderful, 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 wonderful that, that we have to sort of divide the universe in two to make room for it, all on one side, all by itself. And I understand why they think that, and I think it's just wrong. It is wonderful. It's astonishingly wonderful, but it is not a miracle, and it isn't magic. It's a bunch of tricks. And uh, it really is. I like the comparison with magic, because uh, stage magic, of course, is not magic magic. It's a bunch of tricks. And consciousness is a bunch of tricks in the brain. Uh, and we're learning what those tricks are and how they fit together and why it seems to be so much more than that bunch of tricks. Uh, now, for a lot of people, the very suggestion that that might be so is offensive or repugnant. They really don't like that idea. And uh, they view it as an assault, sort of an assault on their dignity or their specialness. And I think that's a, a prime mistake. It's a mistake because it means if you think that way, you're going to systematically ignore the paths of exploration, of research, that, that might tend to confirm that. And you're going to hold out for mystery. You're going to hold out for more specialness than is really there. And some people just can't help themselves. They, 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 they can't take seriously, they won't take seriously, the idea that consciousness is uh, an amazing collection of, of sort of mundane tricks in the brain. And they say, oh, I just can't imagine it. And I say, no, you won't imagine it. You can imagine it. You're just not trying. I think, I think the, the hidden agenda, and not so hidden very often for all of this, is the concern about free will. I think that at, at the bottom of the barrel, what people are really worried about is that if we have an entirely naturalistic and ultimately, in a certain sense, mechanistic at the, at the nano level, at the, at the protein level, if we have a mechanistic theory of consciousness, this will show that, oh my gosh, we don't have free will and then life has no meaning and, and I can't be responsible for my uh, best or worst deeds. And that doesn't follow. But uh, fear that it would follow rattles people and deflects them from taking these ideas seriously because they really don't want them to be true. My approach to that is to challenge that desire and say, no, everything you want or should want in the way of free will, you can have on this picture. You, there's some traditional notions of free will that turn out to be impossible on this view. Tough. But why do you want them? They're not important. They are, they are uh, simply ill-founded desires. The varieties of free will worth wanting, you can have. Uh, and so take a deep breath, relax, and let's figure out how it's done. For billions of years on this planet, there was life, but no free will. Physics hasn't changed, but now we have free will. The difference is not in physics, it has nothing to do with determinism or indeterminism. It has to do with ultimately with biology, particularly evolutionary bi biology. What has happened over those billions of years is that greater and greater competences have been designed and have evolved. And the competence of a, of a, of a dolphin or of a chimpanzee uh, the cognitive competence, the, the sort of mental competence, is hugely superior to uh, the competence of, you know, a lobster or a starfish. Uh, but ours dwarfs the competence of a dolphin or a chimpanzee, uh, uh, perhaps even greater extent. And there's an entirely naturalistic story to say, to tell, about how we came to have that competence or those competences. And it's that can do. It's that. It's that power that we have, which is natural, but it's that power which sets us aside from every other species. And the key to it is that we don't just act for reasons. We represent our reasons to ourselves and to others. The business of 
asking somebody, why, why did you do that? And the person being able to answer is, it's a very simple and very, it's an everyday phenomenon, but it is the key. And it, it is the key to responsibility. And in fact, the word responsibility sort of wears its meaning on its sleeve. We are responsible because we can respond to challenges to our reasons. Why? Because we don't just act for reasons, we act for reasons that we consciously represent to ourselves. And this is what gives us the power and the obligation to think ahead, to anticipate, to see the consequences of our action, to be able to evaluate those consequences in the light of what other people tell us, to share our wisdom with each other. No other species can do anything like it. And it's because we can share our wisdom that we have a special responsibility. It's, uh, as the old tag would have it, it's noblesse oblige. We have the power, and that's what gives us the obligation. And that's what makes us free in a way that no bird is free, for instance. Mm -hmm.